CR101radio.com, podcasts, and more. CR101radio.com, podcasts, and more. So is money perhaps truly the root of all evil? Let's discuss. Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Rob Halliday Perspective. Let's begin. So, I think you've heard this a lot. I think you've heard a lot of people say that the, the problems of the world are, are a corruption that is originated by the love or by, by money, right? People will tell you that the root of evil is money and that money corrupts and that money too much of it can be very corrupting and can be indeed bad for you for your mental health for your spirituality for your physical health perhaps etc etc but if you truly think that the root of all evil is money then Frankly speaking, you are a communist. You're a commie. <laughs> you are a communist. Because that's not how the verse or the saying actually goes. If you actually read your Bible, the, the Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. The Bible actually says the love. Let me say that again. The love of money is the root of all evil evil. Not the money, the love of money. You see, Jesus was giving context through a financial scope, but you could literally insert that line for anything. If, if Jesus was talking about, you know, athleticism, right? He would tell you the, the love of exercise is the root of all evil. You could apply this term to, to anything, right? But see, that's what people literally take out of context. They'll tell you that money is corrupting, that money can lead you down astray and could lead you down on a bad path, which that's just not at all what Jesus was saying. That's not at all what the verse is saying. That's not at all how the saying goes. The love of money. The love. To put money or anything above God is the root of all evil, right? When people make money, their graven image, or whether it's their house, or whether it's their pride, or whether it's themselves, whatever, that is the root of all evil. To love anything more than God himself is the root of all evil. Money has nothing to do with it. Now, if you do love money more than you do God, then yeah, <laughs> that is the root of evil, but it is the love of that object, right? You could even say it to innocent things. The love of, the love of apples. <laughs> the love of apples is the root of all evil. It wouldn't make a difference. If, if you put apples above God, then you, that is the root of evil, right? Very, very simple. To think otherwise, like I said earlier, you are a communist. But I, I, I do want to basically shift gears a little bit. I actually want to talk about money in and of itself, because in today's society, Money in the ancient times is a very different concept of money of today. Today, money is, is fiat currency. Okay, that's how we describe our money. Before, in ancient times, and even not, not too long ago, money was basically a bridge currency to take two different assets and bridge them together. Okay, today that is not the case at all. Before, currencies were actual assets, right? Currencies were typically gold, silver, precious metals, other commodities, etc. Meaning the currency in it of itself had a value, right? Today, that is not the case. Money has been completely changed and redefined. M money today is now fiat currencies, right? That's what most worlds use they use fiat currencies, the euro, the yen, the dollar, right? Those are all fiat currencies. Currencies that are literally in it of themselves, not assets at all, and aren't even backed assets. And backed meaning it is not backed by any 
substantial asset. Currencies of today are simply backed by the word of the government. You take away the trust and the word of the government, and now you no longer have a backed anything, right? At that point, you literally have nothing. I mean, fiat currency in and of itself is nothing. You take away the, 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 the lie and the backing of the government, and it's really nothing. It's, it's nothing times two. But you see, in today's cultured society, we, you know, we, we study, we go to school, and we are told to get these jobs, and we are told to basically transform our lives as fiat currency go-getters. Most people today, right, when they get a job, what exactly do they work for? Are they working for a purpose? Are they working to gain any meaningful assets? Ask yourself that question. Because if, you, if you're honest with yourself, you spend hours and hours and hours and hours a week attaining a fake currency that is backed by nothing but the will of the government. What exactly are you attaining? What exactly are you working for when you work a traditional job you see in the ancient times right when you had a traditional job you were typic you know you were typic typically compensated with a asset you weren't compensated with with a fiat currency you were compensated with an asset and yes you could be compensated in a form of currency but that currency in it of it of itself has to be an asset you know in ancient times people would use like i said silver copper um gold Right? If, if I was to get paid in gold, people, you know, that is an asset. That is an asset. That is something that I could take and I could hold on to, and it will forever be worth something. Right? Well, then people can make the argument and say, well, Rob, technically speaking, the dollars or the euros or whatever currency that you receive in your job, technically speaking, you could take that currency and convert it into an asset. Which, yes, they are right on a, on a subsurface level, on a surface level, but really, think about it. You're going to work all these hours for a fiat asset that is, mind you, heavily manipulated, heavily inflated. Then you're going to take that fiat currency and then you're going to convert it into an asset at a much lower inflated cost? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, what if you spend your entire life, what if you spent your entire life working 40, 50 years of your life, right? And you've amassed a substantial savings, and now you wish to retire, and you've got a good chunk of change in your bank, right? And then the government collapses, or the government goes away, or the currency changes, or a war takes place, and that country is no longer in power. What happens to your hard-earned work? It's gone. Gone. Disappeared. Because now... Everything that you worked for is gone. You see, that can't, that can't be said for assets. That can't be said for gold. That can't be said for silver. If you have gold or if you have silver, if I took that silver coin and buried it in my backyard, that one coin is still going to be one coin, whether it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 100 years from now. If I buried a fiat currency today, in the next 100 years, next 20 years, 40 years, that currency may not even exist right? It may not even exist. So, you know, we have this entire dilemma, we have this entire workforce that basically works for the will of the government. The, we have a, a major workforce out there that is not working for themselves, that is not working for something they love doing. They are working to attain magic government money that has no value, that has nothing, except for the trust of the government. And let's face it, do you trust the government enough to think that your money is going to be there 20, 30, 40 years down the line? I mean, look at your history, right? I, I keep going back to history, right? Historically, give me a single government that has existed since the dawn of time and continued on to exist. There isn't one, right? There isn't one. So going back to my original question, is money the root of all evil? No, no, it is not. The love of of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And as men and women of a Christian background, hopefully, right, 
I think it is our responsibility to think about what exactly you are attaining while engaging in the modern workforce. Are you engaging the workforce simply for a fiat currency, simply for magic government willful money? Or are you perhaps, you know, finding purpose in what you're doing, right? I think the truest form of freedom in terms of workforce, a lot of people will tell you, you know, I don't have to work. I got all this money. Now I don't have to work. That's not, that's not success. That's not freedom. That's, that's sheer laziness. That's all that is. That's idleness, laziness, truancy. That is not success. True success is having to be, you know, having, having the ability to work and engage into the workforce in a meaningful way without necessarily having the burden of fiat currency, right? If, for God forbid, something was to happen to your job, right, God forbid, you could say to yourself, you know what, I'm okay, I'm all right, right? But to do that, you have to be wise, you have to be a wise steward of your wealth, you have to be a wise steward of your production, you have to be a wise steward of your time, right? If you, if you aren't, well, good luck, <laughs> right? So that, in my opinion, is true success. Finding a, a, a purpose in life that isn't reliant on fiat currency. Because like I said, if you look, you know, people like to, you know, determine your calling. You know, what is your calling? You know, yada, 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 yada. And historically speaking, if you look back into, if you look at the Bible, if you look at all the examples of that, that God gives us and all the various characters, Nobody really made money or currency from their calling. Their calling was something that they did uh, either primarily or on the side, doesn't matter. But it is something that they had a passion for, something that, irregardless of what happened, they would continue to fulfill their calling, right? I think it was, uh, was it Matthew or Paul? It, it's it's not coming to me at the moment, but one of them were uh, one of them were uh, they you know a lot of them were fishermen and yada yada. But one of them was a tent maker. I think it was Matthew, perhaps Paul. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to clarify later. Brain's not working, but he was a tent maker, right? That's how he made his currency. Okay, that's how he paid the bills. That wasn't his calling though, right? That's just what he that's just what he occupied his time with. That's just something that. You know, he paid his bills with, was able to buy groceries, buy food, take care of, you know, whoever was under him, whatever responsibilities he had. But his calling was teaching and preaching the gospel. That was the calling. That in and of itself didn't make him money. Now, true, today, I'm not saying that you can't have a calling that also does give you currency and takes care of you and your family. You can. You can indeed have something like that. But I don't think that is the standard while it does happen, it actually does f happen rather frequently. It is, however, not the standard. It is not the standard of living. And I think, like I said before, the truest form of freedom is to fulfill a calling and to do a calling without the distractions of modern cultural society, without modern government interference, without the illusion of fiat currencies, right? I mean, why should a fiat currency, think about it, why should a fiat currency which is backed by nothing, is nothing, be the thing that makes or breaks your calling? How can nothing destroy something? That doesn't even make any sense. But it does, and it happens all the time. You have all these monopolies who just basically crush the small business. And what people don't understand is, why they're being destroyed. They're not being destroyed because monopolies have more money. It's simply that monopolies have the resources, right, to execute non-fiat tactics to destroy these smaller businesses, right? People will tell you it's about the money. That, it's not actually. If you zoom out, it's not about the money. How can it be about the money? How can something that is literally nothing destroy something that is something? Nothing can ever destroy something that's illogical, that doesn't even make any sense, does it? So is money the root of all evil? No. Your laziness, your truancy is. If you're not a good steward of your money and your business, if you're lazy and have no plan, 
then yeah, that perhaps is the evil. Not your lack of fiat currency. Your fiat currency is not going to move you in the world. It will in the circles of men and in the circles of, of you know, the brotherhood of man. But by and large, that is not what's going to determine your success. Your determination, your success is determined by, well, first, by God, right? But outside of that, it is determined by your will, your focus, your strategy, and your ability to take something and convert and make that bigger and make that passion grow, to take that something and make it into more somethings, right? You never take nothing and make more nothing. That's not a business, right? I, I you know, I, I have to laugh because, you know, t today um, we're having a, a huge financial shift. I think uh, cash is going away, right? And people are, are, are afraid of that. And true, it's, it's a very scary thing to give the government more power, especially in the monetary system, which they already have almost total control. But once everything goes digital, you know, the governments could usher in their agendas and they could keep track of you a whole lot easier, right? So I understand the need for cash and I'm all pro cash and I would, I, I kind of hope cash would stay. But, but here's the silver lining, right? Let's say, for example, we all go into full digital currencies, right? And we get rid of cash. Well, think about it. Under the table, right now, if I was to make an under the table deal, I would make, you would pay me with cash, right? Well, because cash is now useless in this future where everything's digital, cash is useless. Well, guess what I think will be coming back? I think the barter, the bartering system, the barter system, which was the initial system of of ancient times i think that will come back because right think about this for a second if everything's digital and cash doesn't work but i want to pay you under the table well perhaps instead of giving you cash which is no will no longer be valuable i'm going to give you eggs i'm going to give you milk perhaps i'm going to give you silver perhaps i'm going to give you some kind of precious metal perhaps i'm going to perform a service which in turn will bring back a system that has more transparency and, and more honest it's got a more integral and a more honest structure. That is something that I actually see coming back uh, substantially with the digital age. I think it's not the big bad demon that people think. Because like I said, God uses evil to do good. God uses evil people to do good things. And I think I could see a few things that I could be like, huh. When you put it that way and when you look at it from a specific lens... It's interesting how old systems, true systems, tend to come back and not completely die out. So remember, if you're out there in the workforce, why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for the money? Is there a higher purpose? Is there a higher designation for in which you're trying to achieve in the workforce? Think on that for a while and see where you stand. I'll see you in the next one, folks. Shlan Jamal.